and Andrew the Red here for August New Books. I've got a different background for you and try to switch it around. Behind me is my science and philosophy uh, shelves, and then above at the top there is actually all of Shakespeare uh, with a couple little idols and stuff. Um, so I've got history. I've got quite a bit of history. I've got philosophy and psych and education and politics, and literature, and science. Oh, mostly history of science. Got quite a few in. Uh, there's a new book, uh, online bookstore I've been using twice now called Better World Books, all one word. And um, pretty good. I, I actually bought a lot of their stuff off of Abe Books. Uh, they have an account on there. And I found that they have their own website, and they have pretty good prices. They... They're just like the book depository. They don't charge any shipping. So, and there was a there's a deal on right now, f six books for, uh, thirty five bucks. So it's five fifty a book. So that's great. So I I got a lot of history of science from them. So anyways, I'll get to those. But I'm gonna start with history, and I got them all in order here. Here is Edith Hamilton's, The Roman Way. I've got some other of Edith Hamilton's, and I saw this. I thought I, I should have it. Uh, the Greek Way is her most w well-known work. She wrote when she was in her 60s and maybe even her 70s. Uh, but she's pretty good for an introduction to the ancient world. So I've got the Roman Way now. Here's another one on Rome. The Fall of Rome. It's a really thin, big purple book. Um, can it be explained? So... Uh, this is an anthology uh, by a whole bunch of authors with different ideas of the reasons Rome fell. And if you've taken a history course or at all heard of Rome, you probably know that it's still hotly debated as to the conditions of Rome and why it fell. And usually people cite many. There, uh, I don't think anyone would say that Rome fell for one reason. There's always many. So in here, there's about population, economics, social organization, and then just the survival of an empire as such. And you probably, if you're an American, you probably heard quite a bit about, is the United States an empire? And will it fall eventually too, just by nature of being an empire, just as the British Empire fell? Here's one I got from Better World Books, pretty much brand new. Um, the, what is it, the Annals of a Fortress, 22 Centuries of Siege Warfare. I thought this might be interesting. Um, got stuff in here, a, lot, a few pictures on just different techniques of siege warfare. And I've played a lot of video games that are in the medieval era, and you do sieges on castles, which usually means you... Uh, I guess at least in the beginning, you sit there and you starve them out or you try to. And if you can't starve them out, uh, which means you block uh, merchants coming in, giving them food. And of course, you don't farm inside the castle walls. Your farms are outside the castle walls. So if you can't starve them out, then of course, you've got to start using catapults and trebuchets and whatever else you got. Romans used giant, uh, they had catapults, but they also had um, shot arrows shot big balli uh, ballistica arrows, and they did all kinds of stuff, um, siege towers. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, read more about that. Here's medieval myths. I guess I haven't been doing any years, but I don't know if anybody really cares about that. Um, maybe authors, but I don't think anyone really cares. I guess I, I do put them in the bottom description, so that shouldn't be a problem. So I, I thought... Uh, I thought this might be interesting, especially because I predict that much of the medieval myths are just based on ancient world myths. Um, I'm also curious in here, I'm hoping, I'm hoping in here it talks about myths of the ocean in terms of sea monsters and, and uh, stuff that they might see if they got to the end of the, the edge of the world and all that. I'm, I'm hoping that that's in there. That's been my main reason for looking at that the medieval myths, because you probably have seen old maps, um, places where they had not explored and they didn't know was there, and they probably had cert sent out uh, ship captains before that never returned, and so they really believed that there were sea monsters out there. And so I'm hoping that there, it, there talks about that in there. Here's Thomas Fleming. 
on Washington. It's called The Perils of Peace, America's Survival Struggle for Survival After Yorktown. So this is supposed to be about, I, th- I think it's about Washington. Uh, so I, someone, someone recommended me this. So it's just, a, it's a part of American history. And it says after Yorktown. So I am not that familiar with American history. So this appears to be in the era of George Washington. So um, that'll be, a, it's a nice collection by American history, which I'm hoping to do. Um, eventually I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm still kind of editing and fussing over my ancient civilizations video I made because the audio is all screwed up. Um, it's really annoying, but I, I still am interested and want to continue on with reading into Samaria and all that. So eventually I get to American history. It's just going to take such a long time. Here's another piece for American history. It's just a, uh, it's actually a library book um, that I got. So the library, uh, hopefully it was withdrawn. Oh, it is withdrawn, yeah. It's a library book, but it's called Dreamers of the American Dream by Stuart H. Holbrook. It's supposed to be another good American history book. There's not much to look at, really. It's it's just a library book. Um, so I'm hoping this will be great. Stuart H. Holbrook is supposed to be a good name. This is 1957. He's written a lot on American history. Okay, carrying on with American history is this big... I I guess it could be in biography, but I didn't put it in biography. This is on um, Abraham Lincoln, The Prairie Years and the War Years by Carl Sandburg. The reason why I picked this up, which was kind of an odd find, actually, is, again, this isn't much to look at because it's like a, actually, it's not a library book this time, but it's just a red cover with a little bit of Abraham Lincoln um, on the cover. Uh, the reason why I picked this up is Conrad Black. You may, well, I mean, you might not know, he's more of a Canadian-British figure. Um, he was involved in some controversies with crime, but he is a, well, I don't know. I don't know what his reputation is like as an academic historian, but he's written a few books on, uh, well, one book on FDR and another book just recently came out. But he, I have a little newspaper clipping from him. I think I talked about this in a previous video. He recommended two other books, um, excluding his own on FDR. But the other one was, was Sandberg on Lincoln, which I've got now, or at least I guess it's a many volume set. But this one contains two volumes. The Prairie Years is one, and The War Years is another. So I got them together. Um, He also recommended another one on Washington, but I don't know what the author is now. It's called Washington, A Life, and I'm looking for it, and I'll get it if I see it. A couple books on the French Revolution that I got for free. Here is The Coming of the French Revolution. This is a little little book. Um, I'd like a few more because... Although it is not, um, it is similar to the American Revolution. Um, it's still, it's, it has some sense of a liberty tradition, but the, the French have always had a different concept of liberty. And even including today, if the, you, would not, you would not include France as an American-like country. And yet they were supposed to be, had similar co- concepts of liberty, but... This is not the case. Uh, British liberty is far closer to the American tradition, but I'm still curious why, what, what went wrong with the French way of thinking about liberty. Um, it's French liberty is closer than any kind of other European liberty. German liberty didn't exist. There's no Spanish liberty. But French liberty had something. It wasn't the same as a British liberty, but what was it? So I'd like to know. Here's another one. Um, from despotism to revolution. Um, this is also on. This is on. This actually, I guess this is Europe. This is Europe in general. Um, so, it's actually part of a giant series on the rise of modern Europe. But anyways, um, 1789 is the French Revolution. So it ends at the Rev- the French Revolution. So that'll be good too. Okay. Here's a book on Roosevelt by Edmund Morris. Hope there's enough light. 
Colonel Roosevelt, but this, I don't think, is this the, this isn't the famous, this is an FDR, this is Theodore Roosevelt. I don't know why I couldn't think of it. Here's a John Keegan book I thought would be good on war. This is The Face of Battle, a study of Agincourt, Waterloo, and the Somme. Um, I read actually a little bit of this. I was walking with it, and I was reading a bit of it after I left the bookstore. And he comes right out and says that he's never been in a war. <laughs> and yet, he um, he is a well, well, I don't know what well-known, but he is one of the names in discussing and documenting and, and uh, um, just writing about warfare. So there's some pictures in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them very well, though. But anyways... Here's a Victor David David Hansen book, also on war. It's called Ripples of Battle. Ripples of Battle. So Victor David Hansen is a pretty amazing war historian, military historian, and also ancient historian. And you should check out his videos on YouTube. He, he like his speeches. He has his speeches on YouTube, and he's got some pretty awesome ones. He's got one on World War II, which is really good. He's got another one on democracy, that the question of democracy is about liberty versus equality. And this discussion has been happening since Athens versus Sparta, ancient Greece. It, it's just amazing how old these discussions are. We think that we're in, the, it, it's perhaps best to say that in the modern times we have modern technology, but our ideas of social organization are not as well advanced. It's not that different. The difference between social organization in ancient times to today and the difference between technology of ancient times and today is a huge difference. But anyways, the subtitle of this book is How Wars of the Past Shall Determine How We Fight, How We Live, and How We Think. And um, I think he's writing about, or maybe he already did, on the Iraq War he mentions that the tactics of the Iraq War and the Vietnam War were not were the reason why they they failed versus World War II tactics. So, anyways, he's a pretty he's a pretty good author to to check out. And the last one in history, I think, Paul Johnson is a pretty good author too. His book on intellectuals, I have, and I think I have something else by him too, but I can't think of it now. Here's modern times, the world from the 20s to the, ni- to the 90s, of course, 1920 to 1990. Revised edition, this is a nice, nice big one. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to go because you just wonder, how much can we really say about the 1990s when we're only like 20 years away? It's hard to put it in context, but I thought it was still worth having to see just how he... I think a, another great part of reading history is you can see how the authors put it all in context. So how did the 20s lead to the 30s, lead to the 40s, lead to the 50s? And what kind of general areas do they define based on those times and what happens in them? That's the main reason I want to read it. Not for the, the details of the 90s, because I lived in the 90s. I lived in half the 80s. So I'm not so worried about that. I'm more worried about how he frames it all and how we make sense of it all as compared with the previous decades. Okay, that's it for history. Next will be literature.